Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. Someone had mentioned that my voice wasn't clear on the last one. I tried to make an adjustment on the mic. Let me know. This is old equipment. So we're looking at the two hour chart of silver. And it's it's going exactly the way I expected it to go. Uh, you can see that we have crossed over on the MACD and it is heading upward. We've got two green um, spikes here in the past. That's the beginning of the rise. So we could go right through this downtrend line here and into new highs. We, we just need to get through about, on Monday we need to get through 32 and then 32.50. And then it's clear sailing for as far as we can see on the two hour. As far as we can see on the three hour. Same with the four hour. The daily. It takes the daily all the way back to 2013, 2012, 2013 to see some resistance. And we actually have to go to the weekly to see the whole thing. So if we get through 32.50, say we get through 33, um, we're starting to look at just this period here uh, being past price action. Very wide area, bouncing between 26 and 40, uh, 50. So yeah, that's... Um, very bullish. Now we're not bullish on the indicator here, um, but this is one of those patterns that usually doesn't um, doesn't work as often as uh, the normal patterns. Let me see if I can find one for you. So this signal usually is a pretty good signal because it rolls over and cuts through, but when you see it form a straight line and it's actually turning up, uh, that can be a fake out signal. And it's starting to look like on this chart, it's, it's a fake out signal, where we're actually gonna continue rising in the indicator, maybe make new highs, which would put us above the indicator back here, uh, what we hit back in 2020. So yeah, uh, we're gonna be looking a lot at the silver chart because I wanna talk about piling in to the market and when when does the public pile in? So we've seen from this recent price action that looking at the supplies of silver at the coin shops online, the premiums are very, very, very good. And the um, supply is very, very good. There's plenty to buy and the premiums are low. So, um, that is an indicator that there's the market price here is not being driven by the public at all. So there is no piling in going on right now. The question is when when does the piling in start? So there's a lot of these bull bear sentiment indicators like we'll choose this one here. And you know, they use different terms. Some have fear and greed. This one has fear, but it doesn't have greed, so. Um, but this is a general sentiment of the public in a cycle, in a market cycle. So the big question is, in the silver market cycle, where are we on this? Now, the bottom is despondency. And I think we could argue we've seen that. The twelve dollar price during the COVID low, and then back to sixteen, and uh, not a lot of interest, not a lot of talk. So I think I think we've seen dep despondency, depression. Um, yeah, I think we're probably close to that, and then maybe approaching hope. So we're somewhere down around here. I would say closer to depression than we are to hope, currently in the silver market. 
So the question is, how does that match the price that we're currently at and the price in past cycles? So the thing I'm trying to determine here is when does the public start piling in? Now, just based on sentiment, uh, we're talking somewhere between excitement and thrill. So that the public's going to know about it because it's going to be reported. It's going to be in the news. It's going to be something that's exciting that people are talking about. And then uh, people are going to start doing it, tell their friends they did it. And wow, I've doubled my money. And then it gets up to thrill. And that's really be between excitement and thrill is when the piling in, I would say, starts. So when we pull out, let's pull out to the weekly chart and look at the historical cycles. So we have pretty much three that I'm gonna examine here of piling in. Um, we had one back in 1973, and this was after the gold window closed, and inflation started in both the precious metals and across the commodity complex as well. So early 1970s, uh, inflation started, and then we surpassed the, the we went into new all-time highs when we crossed to about three bucks or something. And then we ran to about six, seven. So this is really a, a two-time uh, move when the public started piling in. And the public did not start piling in. Uh, I didn't pull up the volume, but it's there. Uh, the public didn't start piling in until we were in an all-time, a new all-time high. And in that case, it doubled. The next time was when the public started, this was the big one, when the public started piling in around 650 or so. Uh, when we put in a new all-time high, and that's when we ran from 650 all the way to 48, 49, 50 bucks back in uh, 1979. So that was, again, in a new all-time high, and it, that one went six-fold. And then the next one that we have is the one that happened in 2011. Now, this one did not uh, go from a new all-time high. And I think a lot of people have argued that the 2011 spike that we had was actually uh, kind of a um, move by the bad players to run the price up and crash it. I don't know about that, but I do know that it did not run from a new all-time high. So we, sh we shouldn't really count that one, but just for information, we'll look at it. So it, the new all-time... Um, the piling in occurred, you can see roughly at about the new high for this uh, cycle period of about 22, and then the public started piling in and ran it to 50. So we'll just say that's a two times. So we've got a two times, a two times, and a six times. So average those together, it's like 10 times. So um, say the average is three, three and a third times or something like that. So what happens if that's uh, what's happening now? Um, is the public piling in? Now the volume is pretty high on this, but we've had higher volume on the downside and over here we had high volume, so that doesn't mean much. Uh, and currently, if we come in close, you, you can see our volume is not really any higher this goes back to 2023. Our volume recently is not much higher than uh, anything in the past. So I think we can safely say just looking at the sentiment chart and looking at the historical silver prices and uh, technicals that uh, we are nowhere near the public piling in and usually the public doesn't pile in until a new high time all-time high is made and then usually we get a run so what is the average run we said 33 or three and a, three and a third 333 percent something like that so from new all-time high that takes us 
to one, uh, 165, something like that, 165 an ounce, if we just did the average of the public piling in and where it goes from there. So we haven't seen the public piling in yet, and uh, we haven't made a new all-time high, which will be about 50 bucks, but everything seems to be lining up for that to happen. Uh, we're, we're not overbought yet on the daily. We're still just rounding up. That looks very bullish. Pulling out to the weekly, uh, we're semi overbought, but not really. Uh, if it's a historical type move and then pulling out to the monthly, you can see we're, we're still trending up and it looks like a very bullish move. Something like happened back over here, which was roughly at a price of right in here. So we're about 22 bucks, right? When the piling in started, we're starting to look very similar on the indicator. So. Interesting stuff. Um, now, I don't have it up here in front of me, but I was going to do a video a couple of days ago when we were down under 30, and I didn't because uh, I just didn't have the time. But I was looking at Costco, and as you know, Costco sells both gold and silver. I went on the site, and what was for sale in stock was a one ounce gold buffalo. And I think they wanted 2400 or something, 2450 It seemed pretty reasonable. And then the one ounce maple leaf, they had a tube of them. And it was 779 and it's a tube of 25 I think it came out to be 3120 And this was when silver was 2960 So I was kind of surprised by that. I checked the other online places that I usually look at, the Atmax, SD Bullion, others, and Maple Leaf was 80 cents higher. So that's pretty good Costco selling it um, just a buck and a half above spot or something like that. A really good deal. Um, check it out if you're interested. So let's look at a couple more charts here, just the, the big ones, the key ones. I'm keeping an eye on Bitcoin because it took quite a punishing drop. I was expecting it just because it had rolled over on the indicator and we were heading towards this uh, support trend line and you can see we sliced right through it. So we sliced through it all the way down to 53,000. Uh, does it have more room to run? Yeah, I think it does. It does seem to be oversold here on um, on our daily we'll go out to the weekly and see so on the weekly it's very bearish the indicator has clearly rolled over and it's on the way down so yeah I'm looking projecting next price stop for Bitcoin is going to be or BTC I should say about 45,000 and beneath that we're looking at 31,000 you have to remember that during the COVID low, BTC was basically 4,000 bucks. And after they printed all that money, it ran to 70 something thousand. So as recently as a little over four years ago, BTC was 4,000. So it wouldn't be surprising at all to see it drop to 45,000, you know, 30,000, and then back down next sports round. 14 or maybe 21 this old one around 20 so yeah it, it can drop a long ways from here what does that mean for the rest of the market well I'm keeping my eye on some coins I definitely am keeping my eye on dash I mean dash is getting really cheap for what it's been you know for a very long time um, is it a valid coin I, I don't know I mean it has you know they all have faults but it, it approaches the concept of Bitcoin, but with privacy. Seems to be most of the coins are issued, doesn't seem to be infinite supply. So I keep an eye on it. Um, I would be interested in maybe picking some up if it hit 15, between 10 and 15. We'll see how bad the Bitcoin bear market is. 
Uh, another coin I'm looking at, uh, just for informational purposes, Ethereum Classic. That's basically the Ethereum before it was split off. Had a sort of fork like Bitcoin and BTC and BCH and all those did. So that's kind of looking cheap. I might be interested in that coin at ten, five or ten dollars. Uh, what else? We want to look at the Japanese yen because it's it's kind of scary where we're at. So you can see we're back to the 1980s. And if you remember, it was the interest rate rises here, uh, the interest rate increases in the currency, everything going straight up in Japan back during their bubble. And it's amazing it's been this long. It, their stock market popped, I believe, in 1990. And uh, it may have recently made new highs, but inflation adjusted. It's, it just got destroyed. And so, you know, we're talking 30-year bear market uh, in, the, in the Nikkei index. But you can see the bear market in the Japanese yen has been going since 2011. And it's lost... Now from 0.013 down to point, so it's lost, Japanese yen has lost half its value. And uh, Japan never really raised their rates like everybody else in the world did, so I have no idea what they're gonna do. Um, Litecoin, so Litecoin broke through this long, long, long-term support, actually goes all the way, this trend line goes all the way back to 2017. And we finally got a breakdown through that. You can see it cut right through it, made a low of 57 bucks. Um, the original Litecoin was 84 million. I think there's 74 out there. Uh, there's not gonna be really any more added. The market cap's around 4.5 billion. So it's decent transactions. The wallet's okay. I mean, it's not a bad cryptocurrency. It, certainly not great so it would I think it would become interesting between 20 and 30 bucks uh, I certainly would not consider buying it as this is it's broken through right here it looks pretty bearish uh, next we'll just pull up the Nasdaq because um, just to show you that it, it has not it's not slowing down in any way we're in a breakout, going straight up. You know, if you look in the past, we're, we're actually kind of low as far as a parabola goes. Uh, where, you know, you have to keep accelerating how fast you go up or you're going to have one of these. And you can see it recovered itself and then took off again and the parabola kind of resumed. But the parabola has not resumed. We need to be way up in here for a resume parabola. So, you know, the NASDAQ, that's what maybe in the 30,000, um, it could run up there very quickly. This could, indicator could break out to new high and it could just run straight up. Now it could also crash. <laughs> I mean, uh, how overvalued is it? It's absolutely ridiculous. There, we, we now have multiple $3 trillion companies. Uh, yeah, the, if anybody wants to know where the inflation went, uh, that's where it is, $3 trillion companies. Um, quick look at Palladium. Now, I was uh, interested in Palladium. I actually bought some back in 2008 when it hit 200 bucks. And uh, it ran pretty good to about eight, about 1,000. And then it, it went back down to 440. And you can see it, it's high. It went all the way up to 3,400 bucks. So Palladium's back at 1,000. It's not cheap. It's not expensive. Um, platinum, it made its high much longer ago and it's only 50% of its all-time high. So, uh, like silver, there's, you know, it's struggling to get back to that all-time high. And what else did we have here? Oh, yeah, we want to look at interest rates because they're, they're kind of wobbling right now. You can see the 10-year note is kind of coming up on support. This is the rate. This isn't the this isn't the note market price. This is the interest rate, uh, a chart of the interest rate. So 
Uh, it looks like it's getting ready to cut through to the downside, and that means interest rates falling. Uh, but again, that's the 10 year. The one year is looking kind of wobbly as well. The two year, it's doing the same thing. They're all looking like they're getting ready to cut through to the downside. Now, what is the T-bill the doing? You can see this is the Federal Reserve and the T-bill is clearly pegged. Uh, a hard peg, I would say, pretty much started around May of 2023. The Fed just pinned this thing to 5.4%. And we don't see any weakening in that. That's an official rate, so I don't expect to see any weakening. It's usually not a uh, indicator of what's going to happen in the future. But the two-year usually is, and, and so it's looking like we're going to get lower interest rates right now. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what these charts do when they hit um, when they hit that support. And then we've got gold. Uh, the indicator looking overbought, but the chart looks very, very good. Gold wants to go higher. How much higher? Can't say. Same issue with silver. When does the public start piling in? They start pi piling in at that high volume parabolic breakout. Uh, back here it was about 250 bucks. Ran to 890. Um, right here was about thousand and we ran to 2000 so it doubled again and where does that come in certainly not yet um, we are at the high end of this but I would expect you know if we're gonna go parabolic we're gonna move quite a bit higher maybe double triple maybe 4600 6000 something like that so finally, back to the silver chart and the main topic, piling in. There is no piling in right now. And the proof is that there's plenty of silver available for the average Joe investor. And the premiums are very, very low and there's not a lot of demand. Uh, so that is not driving the silver price. What's driving the silver price is something else, probably solar or companies panicking and buying it up, or maybe even governments panicking and buying it up. For seeing that, as Ted Butler said, eventually we're going to get down to the last ounce, and then there's going to be trouble. Um, so we got to get to 50 without the public. It's going to have to be other factors, because the public is not going to pile in until we cross 50, and then you'll see that sort of parabolic rise and, you know, running into triple digits, and then uh, beyond. And we'll talk to you next time.